This is Winsight with Apostle Tope Aladenusi. Steps to increasing your productivity. It is God's desire that as believers, we are productive. Every believer should be productive. And when we say productivity or being productive, we mean the output, the result of your life, given the inputs that you have. What kind of output are you giving out? What kind of results are you giving out? With the abundance that you have, with the life of God on your inside, with the spirit of excellence that God has given to you, with the exposure, experience, and education that you have, with the knowledge of God's word that you have, how are you increasing your productivity? It is possible to get more with what you have currently. You may look at yourself today and think that I don't have much. I am on the ground level, or I, I, I wish I should have much more. If only I could have so much more, I would do much more. What I'm saying, with even what you have, you can do much more already. God has wired you, has put you in an advantageous position whereby you can begin to have so much output with the input you already have. You can be more productive with what you already have. I'll give you an example. The skin of animals, or let me say of a goat, of a cow, or some animals, some people will take that skin, dry it, and take away the ears, and they eat it. They call it pomo. I don't know if I've heard pomo in this place. <laughs> but some other set of people can take that same skin and use it to make this kind of shoe I'm wearing. The same kind of input, but the output is different. I've seen people that end the same thing. But you look at one, one looks far richer than the other. Because though they have the same input in terms of cash, the output is different. One is more productive than the other. And it's the desire of God, the plan of God, that you maximally use everything that he has deposited in you. You need to give them expression. All your potentials, your gifts, and your calling, you should die empty. Miles Moreau said, and he was correct, that the richest place in the world is the graveyard. Because many people died with their talents, their potentials. That place is so rich. You should go to the grave empty because you have explored and you've exploited all your potentials. God has given us the spirit of excellence. And Jesus is very particular about your productivity. Everyone listening to me, you can increase your productivity with what you already have. You are not too young and you are not too old. You are not too short and you are not too tall. You are not too poor and you are not too rich. No matter the money you have, there are people you can still bless. Can you set up 1,000 people to start a business? If you cannot, you still have a long way to go. We can help people. Can you fund 100,000 missionaries to India? If you cannot, you are still poor. In quotes. So there is room for more. We can be more productive. And today I want to just talk about some steps that you can use to increase your productivity. The first one I want to talk about is step out. Tell somebody to say step out. 
I didn't hear that. Say, step out. step out. Many people have trusted God. They have prayed. They have declared words, but they have not stepped out. And there is a miracle waiting for your next step. The way God works with us is such that we step and then we see the move of God. Many are saying, God, if it is you, move and I will step. Mm -mm. You step out and then you do what? You see the move of God. Step out! Once you have seen that this is an area you should be productive on, this is some, a course you should embark on. This is something that you should do. This is what you believe God will have you do. Step out. Some people here, I'm glad to hear your testimonies that you have stepped out, but some people are still waiting to step out, and I'm here to tell you that you should step out. The miracle is in your stepping out. There is a miracle in your next step. When Goliath harassed the Israelites, they were all waiting on God to save them. But God was waiting for someone to take a step, and David did. It's not enough to say, I am, st-, or to be singing. Someone else said that some people, they are singing, standing on the premises of God. But they are sitting in the premises of inaction. So you are singing, standing on the premises of God but you are sitting in the premises of stagnation, of inaction. You need to do something. You need to do something. What you need to be productive is already within the range of your steps. I'll say that again. What you need to increase your productivity is already in the range of your steps. Let me, let me explore what I'm talking about. Let me use a very good example with money because that's a very good example that people understand. Hey, Amen. I told you that yeah, if you ask people 10,000 plus 10,000, they say, I don't know. 10,000 naira plus 10,000 naira. I say, of course, 20,000 naira. <laughs> so when you use money, so for example, sometimes it sticks. So let's assume you have currently you earn 100,000 naira. Or currently you save maybe one or two souls in a month. That's the best you can ever do. I am saying within that fear that you have, within your reach, you can earn maybe a 150 or a 200,000 or more within your reach. Is it clear now with the money illustration? Okay, let me use the souls illustration because you are believers, you understand that one, right? Let's assume you save one or two souls in a month. I'm saying nothing is going to change within your current reach you have the capacity to save 10 additional souls this month. i say it again. I'm saying that many times when we say we want more output, what we think about is that God, if only he can give me more input, I will get more output. Right? I'm saying the way God designs us is that at every step, you can stretch further with your existing input. As a matter of fact, what you need to stretch to the next level is already in your reach. What you need to stretch to the next level is already within your reach. As believers, this may sound very, you know, we always come and pray, oh Lord, do Expose me, give me more exposure, do this. It's, it's not, when I meet people, for instance, if you don't have a job, you just, you've left school. If you have a question with somebody like that, it will tell you that if I can have 
this amount of money, I can start a business so I can be stable. Many times, we think what we take us to the next level is something we do not have. And so we sit down waiting for God to do something to get to that next level. I am saying at every stage in your life, what you need to get to the next level is within your reach. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. The Bible says that God is faithful, that the temptations in your life are not different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you the way out so that you can endure. For everything that looks like a temptation, for everything that looks like a trial, for everything that looks like a quagmire or a problem, the way out comes with that thing. The way out comes with that thing. <laughs> oh, if you got this, your eyes will start to open from today. And your ears will open. Listen. Let's make it very practical. What do you desire in your life? Take any area of your life. Your ministry, your family, your business, your career. The next level you want to get to, or the next level God would have you to get to, is the, the way to that is in your current condition. Let's read it again. It says, God is faithful. God will not be demanding you to be productive when he has not surrounded you with the impetus for productivity. He said, God is faithful. He will not allow temptation. This is, and it goes beyond temptation. In everything, there is a way out. For every situation, the way of elevation is present. For every detention, the way of emancipation is present. For every tight corner, the, 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 the path where you take your flight is present. This is the mindset shift we need to have. Because people are sitting down idle, waiting on God to do something. And God is waiting for them to take a step. There is a miracle in your next step. Here at Christ Treasure Center, we are committed to transforming people and raising them to be leaders in family, ministry, community, and all areas of life. Our mission is to equip you to live an all-round victorious life that is aligned to us ever. We hope you join us soon. Steps straight. We're talking about steps to increase your productivity. Somebody say step straight. When I say step straight, I'm talking about being focused and dedicated to your God-given goals. Being focused. You are pursuing something. Be focused. 
Be dedicated. God has put something in your heart. You should learn to stay with it till you get results. One reason why men are not productive is because they are not focused. They are not focused. As a young, as a young boy in the university, I read a book once and I saw a phrase that was really interesting to me that says, success is jealous of scattered energies. Success is jealous of scattered energies. If you are the kind of, if you always, is, today is this one, tomorrow, yeah, next tomorrow, this one, next tomorrow, this one, yeah, every year, yeah, like this. Success is jealous of you <laughs> and that approach. If you want to be super productive, you need to learn focus and dedication. You cannot afford or attempt to be everything. You will end up becoming nothing. If you attempt to be everything, you will end up becoming nothing. If you attempt to be everyone's friend, you will soon be fried in the frying pan of disappointment and stagnation. You cannot be everything to everyone. You cannot be everywhere at the same time. You need to focus. You need to be straight. Philippians 3.13 says, Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I focus. I focus. Focus is very key. Many times, people are doing too many things at the same time. You have just one life. You can be only in one place at the same time. You can do only a few things at the same time. So you need to be very deliberate about what you focus on. Focus is key. Focus. What do you focus on? I think, I think you need to do, a, do an audit of your life. Look at your focus. Look at your attention. What you pay attention to. Because I think, like I said, you can get much more with what you currently have, with focus. I'm not saying you should do only one thing. What I'm saying, everything that you do, there should be purpose in every step. That same verse, that same chapter, that chapter that we read, uh, 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 Philippians chapter 3, Paul says, I do not look like one that is just beaten up, up that is shadow boxing. He says, there is purpose in everything I do. There is purpose in everything I do. You should, uh, by now, you should look at your life and say, what should I streamline on? For instance, your spiritual growth is very key. So, okay, what will I do to ensure I grow and always grow spiritually? You lock it down. Your health is key because without this body, the anointing will not work. The anointing needs the body to work. So your health is key. So I expect you to be doing some exercise. You know, you should focus on things that will increase your productivity, your personal productivity, spiritually, even physically. Then after you have done that, you look at your family, your ministry, your industry, and say, what will I focus on? And stay with those things. Stay with those things. And keep doing it. 
Success is jealous of scattered energies. And finally, step up. You want to increase your productivity? Step up. I told you to step out. When you step out, step straight. And by that I mean you should focus. Then once you have done that, some of you have already done that, make sure you always step up your game. The biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. There is a way to do what you are doing better. There are better ways to do what you do currently. You can improve on what you are doing. If you do the same thing for six months, you probably may be living in the past. Sorry, I say it again. If you do the same thing the same way for six months, maybe you are living in the past. When you see yourself doing something, you should ask, how can I improve this? What can I do better? How can I add value to this thing? You are an employee. Last year you did so well. They loved you. I'm sorry, this year we will not promote for last year's performance. We want a fresh performance. We want to do something better. In fact, you've only told us that we should expect more. Anytime you do something exceptional, people say, wow, great. You've awakened their consciousness that they should expect more. And guess what? They are not expecting more. So the, the bar has been raised. So if you, don't, if you still give at the same level you are giving, they'll say you're not doing well again. Say, ah, but the same thing I've been doing before now. You raise their expectation. The same thing in your family, your spouse. Have you ever done something for your, for your spouse the first time and it's like, oh my God, I'm blown away. Do it the second time. <laughs> the same way. You see that you won't get the same effect. Hallelujah. The guys are laughing. The women are sucking it in. <laughs> eh? And it goes both ways. Because we are not, we are, uh, it's natural to expect more. The moment you've done something for your spouse, not like you, maybe your spouse's birthday party this year, you did one kind of stunt, surprise. Will you get that same surprise stunt next year? It's no longer a surprise. So you have to be creative. You have to do something different again. You've already raised the bar, and you keep raising the bar. You have a product, you are, you are, you, you, you are, you are a person, you have a, your business, you have a product. There is a way you service your customer. You should be asking, how can I do it better? How can I add value? What are the better ways I can do this? Because your customers too, their taste buds have been, have, have been enhanced. So they are expecting more. So you should always push for more. You should always give more. You should always do more. There is a way to improve yourself. Some people have left school, left school for several years. They've not done any kind of study, whether formal or informal. The same way, the same way they've always been. Some people have been believers for several years. They've not read the Bible. Never. The same way. They don't read the New Testament. They've not read the New Testament. The same way. The same thing. No, no, no. The biggest room is the room for improvement. We believe that you have received a message from God. And before we go, we'd like to ask you a question. You could not control the date you were born and the family you were born into. Do you think you should be in control of your life? You know, God should be the one to control your life. So if you want to give Jesus control, you want to accept God's sacrifice. You can say this word after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross and on the third day you rose again. I give you control of my life today and I believe I am born again. Amen. If you said that prayer, then you've taken a great step in your life. We would like to mentor you in this wonderful journey as you walk with the Lord. Please write us or send us an email using the details on your screen. Hallelujah.
here at Christ Treasure Center, we are committed to transforming people and raising them to be leaders in family, ministry, community, and all areas of life. Our mission is to equip you to live an all-round victorious life that is aligned to us ever. We hope you join us soon.